I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how you can get the most realistic skin textures in Photoshop. If you want to get a perfect skin texture like this, so let me just go back with me and show you what I just did. So this is the before and this is the after. You can see the skin textures are still there, everything now intact. If you want to get a realistic skin texture like this, the first tip I'm going to tell you is make sure you use the micro dodge and bone and flex separation to retouch your image. So just merge the two together to retouch your image if you want to get a realistic skin texture. Let me show you how to do that. To do a micro dodge and bone, I'm going to click on retouching academy and click on dodge and bone. And you can use any dodge and bone action you have. But once my visual aid, which is also my check layer, is open, I'll just come to my adjustment layer and just add levels. And just move this midtones towards the highlight side like this so that I can see where to dodge and where to bone. And after that, I'm not going to close this group, come to my dodge and bone group, come to my dodge, pick my normal brush tool, make sure I'm using a soft round brush, my opacity is set to 100, and I'll just take my flow to 2%, and smooth is set to 10. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to dodge the dark part and burn the bright part. So dodge simply means to brighten, white burn simply means to darken. So this part right here below the eyes are looking too dark, I'm just going to dodge them. Make sure you're using a white brush. And I'm just going to brush on this part below the eyes like this just to make them look a little bit brighter. So what I'm doing, I'm basically trying to make the skin look even. I'm going to dodge on this part. This part are looking too dark right here. I'm just going to dodge them a little bit just to make it look even like that. And this part right here, I feel like looking too dark. I'm going to dodge it a little bit. And you don't have to take your time to do this because we are still going to use the focus separation method. So that's why I said you have to use the focus separation method and this dodge bomb method to get that realistic skin texture that we are initially going for. So I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to dodge this part. For the body as well, I'm still going to dodge this part right here to dark. So let me show you what we just did. I'm going to delete this visual aid. So let me just show you what we just did. So this is the before and this is the after. The before and the after. What I'm going to do, I'm going to work on this place a little bit. So I'm going to come to my dodge up burn again. I'm not liking where this place is. I'm just going to dodge this part. This is the before and this is the after. The before and the after. I feel it's looking much more better. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our focus depression. And the trick right here is to use a higher focus depression Gaussian blur radius. Because if you want to retain texture on your image, use a higher focus depression blur radius. If you want less texture on your image, use a smaller focus depression blur radius. Since we want to retain more texture on the image, to get a realistic skin texture, we are going to be using a higher focus separation Gaussian blur radius. So let's come to my retouching academy, click on focus separation via Gaussian blur. Let me just quickly show you something. If I use a smaller blur radius like let's say 3 or let's use 4 and I just use my mixer brush to paint on the image, it's not going to look good, it's going to look too flat. I'm not going to quickly show you that, but that's not what we are going to do. It's going to look too flat, which we don't want. So let me show you the before and after. This is the before and this is the after. You can see it's looking too flat and we've already lost some textures right there before and after. But we don't want that. I'm not going to delete this. Click on focus separation via Gaussian blur again and just click on. I'll use a focus separation blur just of 10 to touch image and click on OK. So I'm just going to pick my mixer brush tool and just hide my high texture layer. And for my mixer brush, I'm using a soft hand brush. This place is selected. And my weight is on 20, my load is on 30, my mix is on 10, my flow is on 10. Sample or layer is checked. And the reason why sample or layer is checked is because I'm working on an empty layer. If I'm working directly on the low frequency, I will turn off this sample or layer. But since I'm working on an empty layer, I'm going to turn on this sample or layer. And another tip I'm going to give you is if you're using a mixer brush tool, make sure you're brushing your highlight separately and also make sure you're brushing your shadow separately. That way you're not going to get a flat image and a smooth image. So if I just brush my highlights into my shadows right now and my shadows into my highlights, it's going to make the image look bad. It's not going to make the image look good. It's just going to make the image look flat. So let me just show you the final side of what we just did. So you can see how flat this image is. So this is the before and this is the after. What I did, I brushed the shadows into the highlights and I brushed the highlights to the shadows. So it's not making the image look good. Instead, let me just delete this layer, create a new empty layer. Instead, brush your highlights separately like this and also brush your shadows separately that started to realistic skin texture and not have a smooth image or a flat image and another tip which i'm going to give you make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the parts of the image you are working on so if i want to work on this small place right here i'm just going to decrease my brush size and work on this small place right here 
like this what if i want to work on a bigger portion like this place i'm going to increase my post size and work on this big portion of the image like this and make sure you brush your highlights separately it's very important and also make sure you brush your shadows separately it's very 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 important so let me show you the before after what we just did this is the before and this is the after the before the after so you can see how good this image is we still have the textures on the image it's looking so realistic so that's how you can get realistic skin texture let me quickly do a quick recap if you want to get a realistic skin texture make sure you're using the micro dodge and bone and focus separation to retouch your image if you don't have time to do the micro dodge and bone Make sure the focus separation Gaussian blur radius are using is a high focus separation blur radius because the high focus separation blur radius will enable you to retain more texture on your image. Where if you use a low or small focus separation blur radius, your image is going to be looking too flat or too smooth. And that is you should consider when using a mixer brush tool. Make sure you're not brushing your shadow into the highlights and make sure you're not brushing your highlights into the shadow. And always make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the parts you are working on. If you have a question, let me know in the comment section. And if you want to learn how to set your mixer brush tool, watch this video right here. I'll see you guys in my next video. Stay creative.